And this panel show brings you a very special show today, and it's the Wild Cards Infinite Imaginarium. And so this is probably like our pilot show, and we're going to see about uh, continuing this on every week. Um, we also have another Infinite Imaginarium next week, and that's with um, Cartman 1, and we're kind of talking about more of the human biocomputer, so like more of the individual. But this one, we're going to talk about a little bit about the individual, but more about the story for humanity and um, what we see um, for what, what, what we what we want to lay down for the future generations. And it's going to be kind of dealing with social contracts, uh, also known as uh, smart contracts, because I think that's a really good um, way for things to go. Um, so. The way we make sense of our world is through stories. Um, Dr. Uh, um, Leto uh, says that perception is basically a story. So what you perceive through your eyes is not necessarily what, what makes sense in your head. It's, it's all your frame of reference of how you grow up and everything, and your mind structures what that input is. And so we're, we're on the cusp of something really great happening. But I don't think anybody really has the frame of reference to, because it never has been done before, where we can decide, uh, design how the future society is going to play out. Um, and that's with the smart contracts, blockchain technology, and, and even with the safe network and all these new developments where we are able to kind of uh, have a peer-to-peer -peer society, um, bypass centralized systems, and have a, a do-it-yourself governance and agreement that we have with people. So that's what we're going to start it off with. We're going to start it off with kind of the story that we want for ourselves and um, then the story at large. So, so, so today we have Lee Travis on. Hey, what's up, Lee? How you doing, Dion? Good. And so I think really uh, what the story that you want for ourselves is why we're pretty excited for having you on here is with Wicked Bean. And um, we also have Holly here, too. Holly, wh how are you? Hey, that's great. What's up? And then, of course, we have the wild card and her infinite imaginarium. Hey, guys. Thanks for coming in, Lee and um, Holly. We've spoken a few times when I initially came on Minds about smart contracts, and I just think that's the essence of all this blockchain drama that's going on. A lot of people, so many people are focusing on the money, but it's really where the smart contracts are, the agreements that we make with each other. And absolutely, Satori, what you're saying, we need to write a new story, get our heads together and have a look at what's going to work for humanity to live on this planet, planet sustainably. Um, and if, you know, we can't keep waiting for politicians to do that, they've obviously got their own self-interest at heart. Um, so if they're not going to do it, it's up to us, is how I see it. Yeah, and Lee and Holly, we've just talked about smart contracts before, and um, WikiBeing so lights me up. I love WikiBeing. And I think it would be really great, even if everybody just shared stories. What what has shaped us to this point? What has given us um, shaped our thoughts, our actions, uh, and how, what can we bring in the, the next half of our lives, for the next part of our lives that's going to shape and impact um, humanity? I think it's quite exciting. Well, uh, I don't know if anyone knows about. Uh, Dr. Bruce Lipton, he's a biologist, and he talks uh, some, a really wild story. Uh, I recommend going on YouTube and, and listening to uh, some of his stuff. But the more I listen to uh, these doctors and scientists um, that are more cutting edge, they're starting to describe a story, a human story, that is... is is something that we can start to latch on to as, a, as who we are. And, and we don't really have to look further than ourselves uh, mm -hmm. to find that story. Um, we don't have to look outside of ourselves to find that story. So I'm really excited about 
um, about what story we can we could begin to write for ourselves and and also the uh, the facility that we can build so that others can write their stories and that's really I, I really like how you put that uh, Satori D uh, how we can start to write our stories I think is the essence of our our future and did one of the most recent link that I put on the Imaginarium is Bruce Lipton when he talks about the transformation of a caterpillar to a butterfly um, yes. and then he, he makes an analogy with society, it's like the economy is slowing down, it starts to lag so much that cells everywhere start to see that it's not working and the system starts to fall apart and as that happens, as the um, caterpillars in the cocoon, a new com community of cells start to manifest to see the world in a different way and he calls them imaginal cells and they're creating a new civilization which is going to be the butterfly. So he's, the analogy with society I can really, really get if you have a look at the economy that's, um, it's just becoming a total joke. The numbers that are being thrown around, just the bonuses that CEOs are getting while people are starving on the streets, it's totally out of proportion now. So it's quite appropriate that um, the monetary system is falling apart, and also the main structures. You know, the medical system in Australia, just the basics, education. Um, it's all being regurgitated. It just doesn't make sense if you're really thinking and ask questions. The answers don't make sense. So we're really on the cusp of a new civilization. And yeah, I love Bruce Lipton the way he bring science into this conversation. It's important. Could, could you linger, Dale, could you linger on that point of the um, uh, the, the part where um, where you were talking about the imaginarium cells? They, well, he calls them imaginal cells. Imaginal. They create a new, yeah, so that's his word. And I was like, oh, yeah, Bruce, you're, on, you're in the imaginarium. It's really cool. Um, so he calls them imaginal cells, they're the ones that are creating a new civilization and in the um, context of a caterpillar, they're becoming a butterfly. So during that process, there's a fasting period, everything that the caterpillar normally does stops as it invents itself as a butterfly, the cells have to do a different job. Um, so they stop eating, they stop doing what they were doing before. And that's kind of like the point that we're getting to. Um, food is so important and people have stopped eating from that paradigm of the um, gene foods. That's a real wake-up call. So we're coming back into um, organic foods and growing our own. It's a huge sign that there's a new civilization being formed now. We have to feed, it's to feed the new essence of who we are. Come yeah, I, I really like that because um, I think we forget that we are kind of like sows of the world. You know, like uh, we're not we're not outside of nature. Like the old story is the mechanical story of the, of the individual, and then. And everything's like kind of like a clockwork, and the and the world's kind of dead, and and this is to be efficient, the the um, industrial age, and everybody's so detached from from this uh, from nature, from from the community, from from the uh, the oneness of everything, but the the new the new story is kind of like the old story where uh, Gaia, we we are part of the world. Um, we are part of each other. Like there is no separation between like us and, and the environment that we're in, and um, how we interact with it. And um, this is kind of a new idea, or it's not a new idea, but it's an idea that I'm really working on. And it's called the uh, ecology of ideas, and where where we have to make our ideas dynamic and self-correcting, uh, and kind of mirror image of of what is actually going on in biology, um, so that I mean, I, I love that 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 example of the butterfly. It's really amazing. 
and story is really, really powerful. It's so, it, it's such an important element that sometimes goes missing. Like if you look at Indigenous cultures, the Aboriginal Australians, they passed down Dreamtime stories from generation to generation. They actually sat, the elders sat with two generations to make sure the same story got through. It's kind of like they didn't. Um, they didn't integrate into their culture until they got these stories correct. So that's how they they preserved their um, their history, if you like. And now, if you see the story that we've got, is coming from what is it? Six sources. That's our media. They just it's the same story being rammed down our throats that is being regurgitated. We've seen examples on. Um, news videos of people saying exactly the same headlines over and over as though they've invented it themselves and they really haven't. It, it's just the story is being fed to us rather than coming from ourselves. And that's the shift I'm really seeing around the internet. It's giving us a voice, even though that's now being controlled. The likes of minds where we've got a space to safely communicate um, and the other platforms that are coming through that are giving us the, the, the space to be open and honest without fear of consequence. That's where true stories are really going to come through. And once, like with the wiki being, we can connect the dots and really see that we are each other. That's how I think we'll get stronger because we've been so distanced, like what you're saying, Satori. We're, it's, totally ridiculous that, in my opinion, <laughs> that we, we've been trained to think or educated to think that we're different, if we're not even from um, the planet but from each other. That It's totally, we bought that. We've actually, I think that the greatest cost to humanity has been that we are buying this stuff. We've been told to believe it and when our parents uh, the authorities, and it comes from them. Then, of course, we do. But it takes it really takes a lot to challenge and ask questions of parents. Um, it's easier to do that from schools and now from food. And I think people are starting to question the inherited conversations, the inherited stories. They're no longer applicable. They don't fit for us anymore. But it's, it's high time that we make our own. That's a great point, Dale. I, I like that. And it sort of reminds me of a thought that I was having the other day. Well, and I've had this thought before. Um, that I just guess I was sort of disappointed that so much wool could be pulled over our eyes that we're just such a, um, I suppose, a trusting or gullible is the way I felt about it. Um, species <laughs> and just so just that, that that we're so easily manipulatable but uh, you know and and I was talking about this with Lee and he said well yeah but yeah we are it's we're 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 fragile in that way but we're we're super special and and yeah I, I totally got the sense of that we're absolutely precious there's absolutely never going to be for every single one of us the existence of every single one of us ever again in eternity um, just like we are now and and we're beautiful, we're fragile, and and we're manipulatable, and it's it's too bad. But we have there have been people that have taken advantage of that to the extent. And and like you said, Dale, you know, there's just so much incredibly crazy, um, ridiculous uh, figures coming out of all sorts of media these days, and. Yeah, you look at it and you just almost, it's like a train wreck. You, I mean, if you if you pay any attention to it, it's like you, you just are blown away and you can't take your eyes off of it. But, <laughs> but right, so then it goes back to um, the, uh, the the caterpillar analogy, that all the cells start to just, they, 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 they begin to stop. They, they don't work anymore. But then out of it comes this, this you know, this chrysalis. After that comes this butterfly, and it seems to me, and I think I feel this energy coming from a lot of, of different places, that we're on the cusp of that, that there are so many thoughts coming together. 
Yeah, it's from all around the world and that's where we can see that things are not all right. It's not in our own home, it's just, it's everywhere. <laughs> if you look at Venezuela, it's in really bad shape. Yeah. And if we're following that route, then of course it's going to affect us. The Australians are kind of sitting here and we've bypassed the last disaster. We're okay, but we're not. China's now involved <laughs> at a big level, our mining's going. Of course it's going to affect us and it's such a shame that we have to get to a really bad space before we do anything. And that just seems to be who human beings are. Well, I, I think that it's, I mean, it, 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 from the perspective that we're looking at it now, it, it seems like it's a shame and, and and it seems like there's a lot of waste. Um, yes. But but if if we were to look at it from a different perspective, we'd probably see, uh, you know, everything in a different light. And, and and the suffering that happens, you know, the the, the actual the actual um, word suffering means that you um, you are basically. Uh, let's, let me think this through. The, the suffering suffering is actually voluntary. The, the root uh, Latin word means like it's a voluntary act to suffer, yeah. and and it, and it kind of you know back to Bruce Lipton he he tells another story um, about how we are you know like for for something for a single cell to um, to evolve to become to to grow it needs it needs a bigger surface area so it it can expand. To a certain point by itself, but the only way that it can, you know, these bacteria, the only way these bacteria can 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 get to a, the next level is to go into an uh, into amoeba. They 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 collaborate and they they come together and and they create an amoeba. And there's there's tons and tons of these little bacterium, and they create more surface area. And then you know, just pertaining that to society, we're we're really right at that point where where the, you know the analogy of the chrysalis, and the analogy of the the, the point where we're we're creating more surface area with the internet. We're connecting. We're getting. We're we're, yes. we're building the connectivity, and 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 that is a vital part of of you know something like Wiki Being is a is a vast tool for for human beings to um to to shape themselves in a in a conscious way, but. But it requires many, many other technologies to be in place. You know, the internet. Uh, it needs a, a decentralized, um, you know, uh, data sharing system that, that that can be, you know, broken into like safe network, and which isn't up and running at this exact moment. So it's we're all this stuff is coalescing. It's like we're waiting for the jello to set. You know, we we've put all the ingredients in, and and we're stirring. We stirred it up in the bowl. And then we poured it into the molds, but now we're we're just waiting for, for the you know for the for the Jello to set. And, well, um, I think I think that's now to be creating story because if you look at the likes of Alan Watts, Bruce Hicks, Osho, Eckhart Tolle, they're like our storytellers now. They give us different insight into who we are, how we think, that we are one of the same. They're I didn't, for myself, they're a go-to source for when I'm feeling really down and need a different perspective. It's kind of like I've got a storyteller there. So I think, yes, there is some technology that we need. However, we need to drive this. Otherwise, technology is going to drive us the way that it wants. So we it needs some input. And this is where we can just start sharing, um, envisioning how we can interact with each other. Yes, and I love that um, example of the surface area as well, because that's something Bruce Lipton also says, is that it's the membrane of the cell. So it is the surface area that receives information. So if we look at technology now, just waiting to get information so that we can start to build what is going to further our reach and connect us as a species. So it's great time for us to really start thinking of what do we want. And for me, it is around human agreement. So contracts that we see now online, a lot of the time they're just shoved in our faces and we don't really have a choice. It, in the 
when you think of contract, it's not really a contract, it's, a, it's one will being pushed upon another and to participate we have to agree. Um, whereas with the peer-to-peer -peer network and again this surface area getting wider and communities breaking down and at the same time solidifying, it's our agreement with each other that creates our new story. So yeah. what we've had is just agreeing to terms and conditions that suit a, a centralised party. Well,